Hello fellow survivors and welcome to another episode of Playing Games Badly. Uh, I'm actually going to be doing a little bit of a raft build on this one. We have a crafting day, a harvest day coming up on the server that I play on, Andromeda. Uh, it's a great community, guys. Definitely you want to check it out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to turn that little tiny raft over there into a massive cargo hauler, which is also going to be really useful if you want to try to move a whole bunch of dinos at once or pretty much any other kind of barge work. So, because as much as I love my boathouse here, Callisto's doing a great job. It's just I've collected way too many friends, and it's getting difficult to fit them all in, and I need to find a more permanent solution than the boathouse. It'll just go back to being an exploration vessel, which is what it was intended to be in the first place. I'm not sure if I'm going to be basing on this island here or not. Um, I'm used to just using this as a waypoint to drop everybody off. Uh, to drop everybody off, rather, in English. Uh, this island is just a little bit north of the South Tropic, pretty much directly between the two tropic islands. Um, so I got everybody sitting here with a feeding trough right now, and Callisto's going to wait here, and we're going to take this guy over here and show you guys Bite. Sorry. Show you guys how to turn a raft into a service barge. For the stone gathering, I'm going to be using a Doetti. Uh, if you don't have one, you obviously can do this by hand. The advantage is this is going to be faster, especially if you've up to the melee damage, if I'm correct. Uh, as well as you have no tool degradation. So this is going to allow you to collect a lot of stone very quickly. And then when it gets full, that's why you put it along in a freight hauler. You just come in here, move everything over. Drop it into your freight hauler, and let's keep on going. I want to give a special shout, uh, shout out to Patrizona who is the one enabling me to use my Doity for this one. Uh, I do not have the ability to make saddles for these. I was not the saddle guy in the former tribe, so I was looking to have to spend a lot of Ingrams. She was nice enough to make me one for just a cost, which was rather likable of her. So, give her a quick little shout out. Turn this guy around, start rolling up the hill. Ouch my head, ouch my head, ouch my head, ouch my head, ouch my head. Okay, and here we go with the build. Uh, first, if the ground shakes a little bit, it's because of that absolutely beautiful color Bronto there, who seems to be bouncing around. Uh, he seems to like coming over here and see what I'm doing, and I'm really not in a position to stop him. So, you're going to see that I made five boxes here on the surface, um, four for the materials I need, and then one for all the extra crap that I had on me when I came over. Now, it's okay, because I'm going to be using these boxes in the build. Um, now, this build is going to take you a little bit of grinding time. The raft itself and the stone foundations, you're looking at 125 fiber, 3,920 stone, 2,210 wood, 1,470 thatch, and 75 hide. That's your base build. Now what you put on that can vary. I'm using the large stackable boxes because they are stackable, and they are labelable, and they are movable. So they are simply the best option. If you're playing vanilla, you gotta go with something else. But, um... For those, I did 50, so that's another 13, uh, 50 for fiber, another 3,600 wood, and another 25, um, another, uh, 1,800 for thatch or something like that. Uh, yeah. So, all in all, with the help of my best friends, um, that grind took me about three hours, give or take. Yeah. 
And right now I'm moving really slow because I've got the mats that I'm going to need to do the whole build on me all at once. So... I'm also moving really slow because this happens every single time I drop in the water for the first time in an hour. There we go. Okay, so now one wing has done a phenomenal job of coming up with a great way to center one of these pillars so that you can find an even straight line in the middle of your bait, in the middle of your raft. Uh, and that is if we first remove the sail, okay, and then if you equip the pillar and then hit drive without touching anything else, bang, it'll snap it right to the midpoint and then just hit the button because it always centers your view on the front of the boat when you switch to that view. So that is now centered. And if we pop back off of that view and try to make another pillar here, for example, we now know that that pillar is going to line up with um, the center of the rudder. So all these pillars are working. Now you will also notice once I remove this guy, that we can play the pillar game, which is every time we put down an additional pillar, it's going to drop the height of the pillar a little bit. I'm not sure if you can use the, um, the S plus pillars, if they'll still drop or not, so I'm using just the baseline vanilla pillars. But the trick is, is there can only ever be one other pillar up. If you have more than that, it won't work. But doing it this way, you don't have to do anything except put pillars up. You don't have to do what One Wing is doing with building all of the extra pieces, yada, yada, yada. This is a great way to get these centered and dropped down. There we go. Now, I am pretty sure that that is going to be deep enough. Uh, and we test that by putting in the first foundation. Okay, so this one right here is going to allow my foundation to be just like that, which is just hanging over the edge a little bit. Um, I usually like to go one lower, but due to the nature of this boat, I think I'm actually going to prefer higher to lower. So we're going to do that. We're going to do that. And then right about now, I'm going to remember that I forgot a step. Uh, and that is to extend this boat out farther. There's one other thing you're going to need to build. Uh, the good news is, is it's only thatch. The bad news is, is it's going to be a lot of thatch. I'm going to see if I can do that and still drive. I can still grab the rudder, so that's good. I'm still doing my Steve Austin impersonations. As you're seeing, it's not letting me place any more blocks than those starting nine. And that's because rafts are weird. And you can still continue to place foundations, but you can't snap them to the pieces that are in the ramp. What you need to do is instead make thatch roofs, have them overhang, 
So let's go ahead and just drop off all of those remaining guys and the two extra pillars that I don't need. Uh, we are going to need to make thatch ceilings because thatch are the cheapest and easiest ones to make. I know why it's not showing a basic one because it's not saying a roof. Um, in Ingram asked the the they're called ceilings when they're flat. Uh, here they're still just a thatched roof. Okay. So let's just go ahead and make all of the those. I'm not sure how many of these you need to make because you're gonna. Drop them, scrap them, drop them, scrap them. I'm going to assume you probably need to make about 20 um, all at once to be able to have enough materials to go all the way through the job. But since I botched that, we're going to try to cover up the botch a little bit. You know, the one that I just told you about. So, there goes that idea. me run very slowly. Okay, so as you can see, we can snap that to the outside. And we can pretty much do it all the way around the boat. You know, if I had that many made. Right now, we're just going to do two sides. A second part. Okay, so now that we have that done, we're going to put all of the foundations up under here. If you time this wrong and it hits the ground, it can't do it. So then we can bounce up. Oh, I'm still too close. Come on. Grab the rudder. You did this earlier, so I know you can. Too close to the to the shoreline, so we're just gonna turn that like that, and now we'll be able to get to that guy easy peasy. Except for where he's still in the ground, probably. Yeah. Not a problem. Turning. A little bit more easy with our peasy. There we go.
Now because we've got two blocks there, now we can do that one too. That's what we call a miss. Good news is, we get materials back. Now I come up here, crash all the ceilings, make sure that it says ceilings. Sometimes this will look through and hit the stone block. Um, so that is a bad, and you don't want that to happen. We're for a 7x7 seven seven square. Uh, if you go to the full max size, uh, it's 9x9, nine nine, give or take a couple that don't uh, ever show up properly. Uh, I don't recommend doing the 9x9 nine nine if you're on a vanilla server, because 9x9 nine nine is 81 squares, minus the 6 that don't show up is 75. That only leaves you 13 boxes. So if you're trying to do this as a moving barge, not the best way to go. Uh, 7 by 7 is 49, which leaves you with 39 boxes you can do, which is great. Uh, I'm not sure if it's something for the server, or if the S blocks and the stackable boxes are coded to not count as squares, but whatever it is, we're going to actually be able to fit a 9 by 9 and then put 50 of these things on top. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to come in here and place, 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 Three high. You can go four, but I find with sometimes with smaller plated characters, uh, it can be difficult to get to that last box. You wind up trying to jump to get to your inventory and stuff. So not worth the hassle. It is not obstructed. Drop the thing. one of these has 45 slots. That is a whole lot of stacks of everything. So, as intended, this is going to give you somewhere upwards of 2,000 stacks. Which means if you were going on just the the stone hall to end all stone halls, for example, two thousand stacks of stone at a hundred stone per stack. That's if I'm doing my math right, and today has not been a good math day for me. Uh, that should come out to about two million units of stone, and that should be enough for anybody. So that is 48. The only two that are left out of our 50 are the two that were over there in the first place. Uh, and I believe they are full. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to miss. Apparently I'm going to miss. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do some transferring. Actually, you know what? That's what I had dinos for. Come on. There we go. Uh, take all that. 
I probably won't even let me take all of that. Hope I got those. Oh, how much weight is this going to be? Too much. Okay. So let's make sure that she can move. Our box is empty. Top, top box is coming with us. Bottom box is empty. Bottom box is coming with us. why things move on that row, by the way. If anybody can explain that to me, I would love to hear a good explanation, but why things aren't always in these same positions. Now, I can understand them being moved around a little bit if there's more options or less or something like that. However, that's not the case. There you go. Isn't that pretty and symmetrical? Okay, so now we can get our dinos up on here. Because there is still plenty of space on the boat. Come on, Violet. You're really having trouble, huh? Okay. Um, to resolve that problem, it is probably a good idea to put lamps on the sides. Or, you know, when you drive your boat places, drive your boat into places like that. I know I'm a horrible person and I have you horribly overladen with stuff, but you can walk up onto these. Now that you're on the beach, you can come this away. So you can see, even with 50 boxes on this barge, I could easily fit a couple stags, um, whatever workhorses I wanted to use, and we can get things moved really efficiently. Third person mode is really obscured. Your view on first person mode is only slightly obscured, so whichever method you prefer, you know, is fine with. The biggest trick, like with all boats, is not beaching your dinos and getting them left behind. Because hit detection is not a thing that will be invented for 40 million years. Oh, dumb, 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 dumb. We know that she's completely laden down. That was just silly. Come on. Come on. We got 40 acres, just turn that thing around. So you know what? That is perfect. Because I think up there, you will be immune to hit contact. And there you have it, folks. One big old barge for all of your gathering, transportation, and base starting needs. Like I said, 2,000 slots. You set this up somewhere, you build your forever base out on one trip. So I want to thank you very much. If this was helpful to you or in any way entertaining, please hit the like button. 
Uh, if you would like to see more of my shenaniganry, please subscribe. If you're interested in zombie shenaniganry, please check out my Seven Days to Die episodes. If you're interested in alien shenaniganry or Matt Damon-esque shenaniganry, please check out my Osiris Do Dawn playlist. And if you are interested in just human-on-human -human shenaniganry, why don't we stop moving? I don't know why we stopped the movie, but I really don't want to know. I just want to try to avoid the fact that there was any problems at all. Um, if you like Alien Shenanigans, please check out my um, Osiris New Dawn plays. And if you like Human on Human Shenanigans, check out Subsistence, which is just in early access now, but it's really, really good, and I think it's going to be a good game. Um, so once again, I want to thank you for being here, and if you can tell me why I keep stopping... I know it's not running it around because hit detection isn't the thing that exists. And once again, I want to thank you for being here. Um, find a safe place to bed down. Hope the dinosaurs and the frame locks don't get you. And I will see you in the morning. <laughs>